ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. No speak English. Tell me. Yeah. Goodbye and good night. All two. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Yummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Hold three. The Moss covers. Three handle. Family Redunzo. Mamma mia! And now. Unchained.media presents the B. Plus Podcast! With your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! Number four, Armbar! I will never retire! I still got 200 more! I got 200 more holes to lift! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the B-Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's time for a bonus episode. Today, we are talking all in. We are not all in for all in, however, because both CJ and regular J have come down with a little something that's keeping them out of action, not able to talk too much. So it's just me and big boy Mikey. How are you, Mikey? Oh, fantastic, mate. How you doing? Yeah, I'm real good. We are some in for all in. Some in. Some in for all in. That's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna call the episode, I think. <laughs> it's just yep. the two of us. It's just us as it has been from the beginning. We're the OGs, we're the, the B plus OGs. The OGs, that's it. Yeah. So did you watch all in? Did you watch it live? Did not watch it live. For the first time in a long time I stayed off social media. I I had to go to a uh, a christening anyway, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to watch it. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to start watching it in the car and then get to it and then have to pause and come back later. I was like, you know what, I'll just stay off social media, muted, a muted messenger, muted Twitter, muted everything. A, it's nice to get a social media break for a while. I wasn't a while. It's fantastic. Yeah, it uh, can be. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I actually talked to the wife in the car on the, on the drive up. So that was nice. Um, she appreciates that. But no. Talk, talk to the wife. Well, why would you want to do that, man? I, know, I, right? I don't know about that part. Oh, uh, no. But no, I actually, and um, a couple of my family members, like um, my little cousin, Matt, they were struggling to watch it live too. And then by the time I got home, I was just like, look, are we going to watch this? And they were just like, yeah, look, let's just all meet up. I was like, look, I'll borrow, um, I've got. Greg's account, like, let's just watch it. And he's like, okay, cool. So let's, um, uh, let's get into it. And I'm oh, mate, just fantastic that I didn't know any spoilers. Like, this is one show I just did not want any spoilers for. Um, yeah, absolutely. You want to go into it fresh. Yeah, yeah. Did you manage to find the uh, pre-show? I did. The I did. Zero Hour. Yes. Um, it was all over YouTube, thank God. Um, and a clean, oh, okay, that's good. clean cuts as well. So it was fantastic. So, um, no, fantastic. Yeah, so I, I had to, uh, I'm just going to say it, I had to illegally stream the Zero Hour because it wasn't available for us yeah. here in Australia. I sent multiple tweets in the lead up. But, I mean, these these are busy dudes. They're getting a million tweets a day. I don't expect them to even see my tweet, I suppose. But uh, I, I sent a bunch of tweets to the All In page and to their pages just asking, is there any option for international fans to watch Zero Hour? <laughs> uh, never got any word. Uh, but, you know... I found a way and it was the zero hour was a little strange. It had a lower production value than the pay-per-view. I'm guessing WGN America had their own camera and sound team. Yeah, potentially. I have a feeling. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. And I had a, maybe there was, yeah, I have a feeling. Or maybe there was sort of done on purpose to, well, I feel it's definitely done on purpose to highlight the main, main show compared to the, well, 
compared to the pre-show. I don't know. I don't think you'd want to do that because the pre-show was on live television and so they would have sold some pay-per-views in that hour. Right, exactly. People that are watching and go, oh, I, I want to watch this. You know, so you want it to be as good as possible. Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's a very good point, yeah. Even, even with a minor, very minor difference, you know, it didn't really take away from anything, though, you know. Yeah, I just thought the sound issues to begin with on the TV show were, were a little annoying, but it was a, a very, very minor annoyance. How fun was the opening? So let's let's break it down. Let's go through it. Young Bucks and Cody come out to open the show, and it felt different. It's not like a, a – it was polished, but it was a polished indie. It really felt like a celebration of independent wrestling. And they come out and open the show. Like at many indie shows around the world, you get the promoters – or the commentators or whoever come out and just sort of hype things up to begin with. Right, exactly. And it was really fun to see that happen on such a big scale. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was awesome. And it's just, like you said, just the feeling of it, just the whole feeling of the, the whole thing is just, was just different. Like, everyone's just like, oh, like, do you get like a Ring of Honor vibe? Do you get a new job? I was like, I don't get any vibe. Like, I get, the like any vibe. I get... I get the all-in vibe. This is something you can't compare this to anything. This is the only thing you can compare to this to is maybe like the first ever Starcade in the eighties when like NWA and AWA and all that got together to do Starcade, which was the original purpose. Yeah, um, yeah, it was definitely unique. It was, unique, yeah. and it felt it did feel very old school with that new twist. It did, which I loved because I'm a big fan of old school wrestling. And everyone's like, oh, what? You know, strong style evolves. It's never like, um, you know, there's a lot of people that don't exactly enjoy New Japan Americanized sort of shows like strong style evolves and that. And I was like, this is like this is head and shoulders above like Gato and that should be looking at guys like Bucks and Cody and be like, hey, can you book our American American legs because <laughs> because if they can do that with like a basically a super independent roster, but what they could do with the super new, new Japan ro- roster. Like, yeah, well, I think it's a different beast though. You know, I think, you know, booking a super independent, like booking your own thing, they get to create their own identity. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Which, which I think, I think suits them. And you know, you know what really struck me and what made it feel really different for me. So uh, I found it really ironic that we hear so much about, these guys, these these younger guys, which I mean, they're not necessarily the younger guys anymore, but we've heard this for years that, you know, they don't sell, they can't tell stories, you know, they just go spot to spot, not just the Bucks, uh, not just the Bucks, not just Kenny, not just, you know, whoever else, but the generation, like it gets talked about like this new independent generation, they just, you know, they don't have any psychology, they don't tell stories, they just run spots yeah, and try to get their shit in. Yeah. Right, yeah, which is a little bullshit. Which yeah. I mean, Brian Cage even calls himself Mister Get My Shit In, right? Like it's yeah. it's kind of the it's even a joke at some point. Like the Young Bucks have definitely made plenty of jokes about it, you know. I mean, they name their moves to Panda to Meltzer, like you know, yeah, it's 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 all in good fun. But I found it very ironic that for this group of people that are told that we're told can't tell stories, every single match on this pay per view told a very solid, very clear story. Right. With the exception, possibly, of the main event, but I think that came down to time issues. Uh, but really, this was the most story-driven wrestling show we've had all year in America. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got that. And people have got to realize, okay, Cody, well, we'll get into it a little bit later when we break down his match and that. Like, Cody's a fantastic wrestler. There's a reason why he's in the top 10 of the year. He He's fantastic. Like, people may not think that he's the greatest in-ring, because yes, he's on cards that are completely always around, you know, the Akatas and Omegas and Young Bucks and that. Like he doesn't come off as flashy. He's not as, um, you know, he doesn't. He does a little bit, but like he doesn't high fly as much as the other guys. He's not as, you know, he's not as comedy based as someone like a Marty. He's not. There's you know, but um, at the same time. Cody, I think, may have found his biggest strength, and that's booking. And uh, that's something that's probably in the blood. Um, but I reckon, like, he's still young. He's still got a lot of career to go. So I'm not saying he needs to 
give up his wrestling career, wrestling career, or anything. But he needs to become a booker, and he needs to step away from going back to WWE. I know, I know they're all. We'll talk about it later um, about the ending of the show, how they uh, when they're all out talking. But um, I definitely feel that Cody needs to get onto that booking side. Well, he posted about it on Instagram. He posted a, a picture on Instagram of him just smiling, and it, and yeah. it said that twenty four hours removed from all in, I still can't stop smiling. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but yeah. this is the gist of it. Twenty four hours later, I can't stop smiling, and uh, my my passion led to a new love. Yeah. Right, so he's he he's fallen in love with promoting. I think, and I don't think this is the last we'll see of all in. No, uh, or well, I don't think they'll call it all in again. It'd be a bit silly to try to call it all in again, but. I, I think that there's going to be more. I think we're yeah. going to see some very exciting things from this group yeah. of guys. And yeah, it was, I mean, I've always said Cody's a character guy and he's a story guy and, and he has a mind more than anything. Yeah. He's, he's, I, I've always liked his work in the ring. Yeah, so, I, I've never, so have I. I, I mean, back when he was dashing Cody Rhodes, like I got it, but I was just like, eh, I, I'm not a fan of what he's doing right now. Yeah. But from, People, I, I get heat for this when I say this, but from Stardust on, I was like, this dude's special. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just out, because everything they gave him, he made work. Yeah. And he found ways to yeah. tell compelling stories yeah. with it. And that's money. And, and he's taken that outside and he's told some of the best stories in wrestling over the last few years. Even just his story as a man who left the company, you know, and had a bucket list of items that he wanted to do now that he wasn't with the company. And he ticked off all those items and then he's added more. And and even just that story, like that's a story he's telling. Yeah. That's his life, but it's a story he's telling and it's it's a compelling one. It makes you want to see this guy succeed. And it all came to a head in that match with because his relationship is a big part of it. And their relation his relationship with Brandy is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It really is. Like I uh, when I was talking to CJ about WWE and Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella and their relationship when it comes into it. And I'm like, people are going to think this is weird on a wrestling podcast that I'm talking about, you know, being inspired by their relationship or whatever. Yeah. But, but it comes into it, especially in the story that they told here. It, it's it's fantastic. Let, let's 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 take a look at breaking down the card. I, I want to talk about one thing quickly as well first. Yeah. Did you notice that there was no weird finishes? Everything was clean. Yeah. Every single match had a solid story, and every single match finished clean. No, I agree. Um, there was maybe one match, which we'll talk about a little bit later, that had a, a potential botched ending, but everything else, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Everything had a perfect ending. What do you mean by potential botched uh, ending? We'll get into the, when we get into the card, but just with a women's match. I don't know. Oh, right, I right. Don't yeah, know. No. But other than that, there was no... I don't think that was botched, but yeah, let's... Yeah, we'll get into that when we get to that. I, yeah, let's let's break it down. So the Briscoes versus SCU start the show. Yeah. Uh, really good, strong 20-minute opener. Something that I figured out straight away was all these guys are going to get some good time to tell their stories because uh, they're giving 20 minutes to this opening tag match yeah. or close to yeah. 20 minutes. I don't know the official time, but it felt like 20 minutes. And it was a, a good match. They told the story they wanted to tell and – I'm like, the Bucks are letting everyone just go out and get themselves over. This is not, you know, there's no, it, it is exactly what it looks like. It's a show for all their friends to go out and do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we got a Kenny Omega promo, uh, but my stream cut out a little bit, so I, I kind of missed it. So I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, there. I, I didn't catch a promo. I didn't catch a promo. Okay, and then the Battle Royal. Now, this was, for me personally, the most entertaining Battle Royal right? So not, obviously, Royal Rumbles are a different beast. Yeah. This was the most entertaining Battle Royal that I can think of since the gimmick Battle Royal at WrestleMania 17. Wow. Uh, that's a that's a callback, but yeah, no, I... I fantastic. This is awesome. Um, it was so fun. Like, just... I don't know, just... The whole story in that, and just obviously the finish, which we'll touch on in a second, but... Some of the spots, well, look, look, when it comes to the finish, I knew something was up straight away because uh, Chico, Chico El Luchador, for anyone who watches Being the Elite, is portrayed by uh, Rocky, Rocky Romero. Right. But in this match, Chico El Luchador and Rocky Romero were both present. 
and I'm like, what's going on? And we didn't see much of Chico because in the very beginning, Bully put him through a table. And I'm like, that has to be either Flip, just based on the body, it has to be either Flip or Neville. Yeah. Because I didn't really get much of a sense of the frame. I couldn't tell if it was a, a ripped buff dude or if it was the smaller frame. So I was like, it's either Neville or or, or Flip. Because I, all I really saw was the height when he got powerbombed through that table. Uh, and then, obviously, in the end, he comes back in, eliminates Bully Ray and unmasks and it's Flip Gordon. And so all that Ring of Honor stuff that I've been ragging on and hating on and hating on, it finally got some closure. Just not on a ring of honor story or not on a ring of honor show yeah yeah i don't know it's just i I agree like i saw i definitely knew it wasn't neville um i think it was neville's got that he's got a real defined body now it's uh it's sort of easy to call but um yeah like i I just thought they were playing around with the to be fair I, i didn't think much of it at the start because i thought they were just playing around with the chico sun thing like that they were talking about on being elite. He's like, oh, you know, get yeah. Myself. I was just thought it was just a or his cousins or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. just a uh, just some jobber in the back, just throwing it on just to uh, you know, just have fun. But I didn't really think of it much of it. Now, but- see, I knew that wouldn't, I I knew that wouldn't be the case because I was very aware that he hadn't been eliminated. Yeah, and the fact that you know they're not gonna, they're not just gonna throw some random person out there. You know, no, true. this is all in. True. This is their big show. Yeah. So I, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of guessed what was going on, but I, I still, when he unmasked, and this is a testament to the way the whole thing unfolded. Uh, I did actually, so I, I remember thinking at the beginning, he didn't get eliminated. Who could it be? Cause it's not Rocky. Who could it be? And I remember thinking that, but by the time they got to that part where, uh, you know, Jordan Grace is going toe to toe with Bully and then Bully tosses her out. We'll talk about her in a second, but Bully tosses Jordan out and then Bully tosses Cabana out and it's like, oh, Bully wins. I forgot. But then Chico came back in and I'm like, oh, this has got to be Flip, right? At this point, because it's Bully left, it's got to be Flip. He tosses Bully. He rips off the mask. I jumped out of my seat. Yeah. Right? Even though in the beginning of the match, I was like, it's probably Flip or Neville. Even though I was expecting something, I forgot about it. They sucked me out of it. They sucked me (laughs) in. And I jumped out of my seat when it happened, you know? Yeah. And that was the first of, I think, four moments that actually got me out of my seat. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah, that's just, that's, that's what it was about. <laughs> no, and yeah, like you said, there were so many great, um, great spots, great people. I actually thought, thought for a second there that um, Cabana was actually going to win it. And I was like, I was yeah. like, oh, wow, well, they, they might give it to Chicago Boy. Like they might. Um, just with all the drama that's been going on, um, I thought maybe, maybe they do give him that leg up. Maybe, maybe they give him like a, you know, I'm not saying that they are genuinely, but they might be a little bit, a little bit pissed that Punk couldn't even do a little video message at all or something. You know, they thought they <laughs> might give Cabana that rub. You know. Well, I think just beyond that as well, I mean, knowing that he was going to go up against Jay Lethal, knowing from being the elite that Jay Lethal was going to be Black Machismo, yeah. possibly, uh, it seemed to me like Colt Cabana is going to tell a really funny story with, with Black Machismo. Right. But then when Bully Ray, I was really pissed off for that moment. When Bully Ray tossed Colt Cabana out, I was pissed off because I'm like, not Bully Ray, come on, anyone but Bully Ray. Yeah. And then it was flip and it, 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 it was, it sucked me in. It was fantastic. It was well booked. The way it came down to Jordan, Cabana, and Bully Ray, her, she, her going toe to toe with Bully Ray after having just tossed, after having just tossed Brian Cage out. I mean, that was star making. Yeah. You know, people are going to be looking up her name like, who's that chick that tossed Brian Cage out and then went toe to toe with Bully Ray? Because after seeing her throw Brian Cage out, you believe that she could have eliminated one of the most like tough, hardcore, legendary guys in the company's history right you know? exactly it it was very impressive it was so well booked <laughs> we're gonna say that a lot yeah i guess moving on we had we had flip gordon uh got the win and then the main show starts and you didn't experience this because you weren't watching live but for me the main show started with fight and honor club both crashing but yeah i could not get a stream up both crashed i had to go to an illegal stream of someone who was uh, streaming it from their TV from the pay-per-view, which 
bums me out because it means people aren't paying. Yeah. But at the same time, it made me very happy because I'm like, well, look, I paid twice and neither of them are fucking working. <laughs> so I got very upset. But then it was uh, the opening match was MJF and Matt Cross. Yeah. And about halfway through the match, my fight stream came online. Yeah. So I was able to switch to that and it was higher quality and I was very happy for the rest of the night. Do we think that MJF and Matt Cross opened the show because they were expecting some issues? Two things. A, yes. Uh, yes and no. Uh, it was a great, cause I know so I know MJF is on Cody's, um, is Cody's been keeping an eye on MJF for a while. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm sure Cody would have loved to have given him that spot anyway. And um, Matt Cross is just a, he's a pro. He, you know, he's, he's one of the most. Matt Cross deserves the opening spot, oh. to be honest with you. He's a legend. He's one I of, love Matt Cross. He's one of the most underrated legends in the independent scene. Like, he doesn't get as much love as. Yeah, he started out as a backyarder, too. Oh, exactly. And he's been there just as long as. He was there around the same time that people like Daniel Bryan and Samoa Joe and that were co- coming through Ring of Honor and that. Like, He's been there for a long time. Um, uh, I, I do think that, yeah, they might have used that just as a little just-in case. Like, let's get the cobwebs out. Um, if anything does go wrong, no offense to MJF and Matt Cross, like, they would be professional enough about it to, uh, you know, be fine that you know people might not be able to catch it or whatever. I, I was okay with that. Yeah. Um, well, it was also – it was not announced. No. So by putting that match on first – if they encountered any streaming errors or issues, which they did, by putting that match on first, no one who tuned in was missing something that they paid for. So if I saw Kenny Omega vs. Pentagon, I have to watch that match. And then I tuned in and I missed half of it because that was the opening match. Or I missed half of There was a lot of talk. A lot of people thought Cody was going to open the show. If, if I missed half of Cody and Nick Aldis, I would want my money back immediately. Yeah, it'd be. But missing half of MJF and Matt Cross, no offense to the guys, they were not advertised. When I when the stream popped up, I'm like, oh, hey, bonus. This match, I didn't know this that these guys were on the right. card. I knew MJF was all in. But I, I thought he was going to be in the Battle Royal, but he wasn't. So, you know, it, it, I think it was very smart of them to do it this way. Oh, I agree, yeah. Because I, I don't think anything was no. done not on purpose. I think they knew that they could likely encounter some issues and so they had this non-advertised match to cover their own ass, and it was brilliant. Yeah, I agree. The fun thing was just um, it was a great. It was it was a, such a fun match. I, I loved that match. Like it, even if it was a a backup, like a, just a a just in case plan, it was a great match because MJF. I, I believe MJF is um, not a, not. Oh no, it, it could be um, him and um, Tom Lawler. Um, Major League yeah. Wrestling, they're, they're two of the future stars of this business. and Absolutely. Look, by the end of this match, people were so against MJF. Oh, yeah. He's he's a very good heel. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I read tweets from StarCast of him. I don't know if you saw this, but there were tweets going around. Uh, I can't remember it exactly, but essentially the person tweeted, or a couple of people tweeted, uh, MJF just assaulted me. He took my phone. He told me he was going to, he told me he was going to make me buy a shirt. He took my phone, PayPal'd himself money, threw a shirt at me, and told me to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. you want to talk about, like, people... Like, we talk about how much we love, like, Matty Warburg or... You know, th- those people that come out and just stay in character for every interaction they have. This guy is at a, a fan convention, essentially. And instead of trying to make fans, he's just taking fans. Wow. <laughs> I just thought that was so brilliant. I had not. And the person tweeted, they're like, I'm, I'm not even mad. Like, I'm kind of impressed at, at how much of a dick he is. <laughs> yeah, I have not heard that. But that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's risky. Yeah. <laughs> but, but damn, it's, it's hilarious. Oh, God. That, 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 yeah. That's hilarious. That's gold. Like it takes that. balls. It oh, takes balls as well. And he's, he's, he's got balls. So I like him yeah. a lot. Uh, I hope he gets out here for a World Series wrestling or something. For sure. Uh, now, then we get a quick Sean Mooney interview with Nick Aldis. And uh, this was one of those, it's one of those minor things that, you know, someone in the production truck should have picked up on. 
uh, they needed to zoom out a little because he's talking about the NWA world title and he's holding it there in the clutch of his arm like that classic NWA world champion pose. Yeah. But the belt was out of shot. Yeah. The belt was below the frame of, and, and it, it's a little thing, but it's the kind of thing you wouldn't see on, for example, and we shouldn't mention them, but we're going to. It's something you wouldn't see on WWE is a blatant error like that. Right. The belt should be in the yeah, shot. No, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a silly little thing. I don't know. Yeah, like you said, someone should have picked up on that first, but you know. It's such an odd thing to nitpick about, but just because I wanted the show to be so perfect and amazing. And, and I mean, look, it was an amazing show. And by the end of the show, I'd completely forgotten about this. But when I look at my notes, I'm like, oh, man, it's it's uh, they, they, you couldn't see the title. And, it, and you want us to believe it's the most important title, right, in wrestling. Yeah. So, you know, you should probably work on that. <laughs> But but it was a good promo. Nick Aldis, I love Nick Aldis, and he does not get enough credit. No, definitely not. Definitely not. I think history will look back at him as one of the greatest champions of all time. Yeah, oh, I've got nothing to love for him. I, I think he's fantastic. Now, surprising match, Stephen Amell versus Christopher Daniels. Well, well, well. Wow. Wow. That elbow dropped through the table. Yeah. I mean, just jumping straight to it. I know there was other stuff that happened in the match, and he proved that he can go as a wrestler. Like, if, yeah. if Stephen Amell wanted to make a career out of this yeah. and go full time, yeah. he could. And I, d- I don't think he would be out of place at no, all. Absolutely not. He's obviously a mix of two things. Sorry, maybe Warburg's still in your, your gimmick here. He's either a naturally born athlete, like, you know, he's he can just get fit and learn things very quickly. Or he's done some real serious training with Cody because, damn, like, he's better than some... You know what else it is, too? You know what else it is, too? Yeah. He's a real fan. Yeah, that's it. The real fan. Right? Like, he loves he loves professional wrestling. Yeah. He's watched professional wrestling his whole life. And, you know, I think that that lends itself to being able to pick it up easier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, agree with, I'm on board with that. Yeah, I don't know. That has to be the greatest pro wrestling match from a celebrity of all time. Yes. Uh, that, that has yes. to be. Um, Definitely. And testament to Christopher Daniels. Uh, big time. Uh, put together a hell of a match. Yeah, yeah. big time. And we said this um, going into it on the All In All In cast the other day, um, that Christopher Daniels was the right guy. The only other couple of guys that you know maybe could have done it, maybe like a Jay Lethal or something like that, that would have been safe, not safe, but like just would have worked with someone like uh, like Stephen Amell and make it look good. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're yeah. thrown in there with someone like a, I don't know, like like a Flip. I, I love Flip, but just in case, like if you're thrown in there with Flip, yeah, well, Flip is still a professional wrestler and very good at what he does. Just being in there with someone that's a little bit more mature and – you know, has had 25 years and stuff like that. Just just helps. And, yeah, I think that was just perfect. 25 years and 20 of those years he's spent being the best as oh. well. <laughs> to yeah. be fair. Like, Christopher Daniels has been one of the best for a very, very long time. Very long time. Absolutely. You know? Uh, I mean, I first became aware of him in, like, 2001. Yeah. And he was one of the best wrestlers going around back yeah. then. And, you know... He made me a lot of money in my uh, TEW days when I when I used to <laughs> when I play. Yeah, have you ever heard of TEW? No. It's like a, a computer game where you fan you fantasy book. It's it's like a fantasy booking computer computer game where you run a promotion. And I used to always sign Christopher Daniels. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah, and he's had multiple Hall of Fame runs in my games. Okay. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. He's he's a legend, yeah. is what I'm saying. And he was a great guy to go in there. But no, but that bump through the table, oh man! St- if Stephen Amell did not have the respect of wrestlers or wrestling fans before that, he has to yeah. now, right? He yeah. has to. Yeah, and uh, another little thing, Jerry Lynn, by the way. Oh yeah, Jerry Lynn. New reference show. Yeah. <laughs> New reference show. That was fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. But a little yeah. thing about um, Stephen Amell was his was his ring gear. I loved it. A little touch of arrow, a little touch of arrow in his ring gear, like the uh, had sort of the arrow imprints on the side of the pants, and he actually had like proper ring gear. Yeah. Like when he wrestled at SummerSlam, he um, he was just wearing shorts and a t shirt or something like that, and I was just like, you know, that's fine. He's a celebrity, but this one he actually looked like a wrestler. I was like, that's cool. I was like, 
Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I think I can't remember what it was on one of the shows. It was either on All Incoming or All Us. He talked about that. He talked about you know they wanted to design him ring gear yeah. in WWE. The the designers and they, he was like, no, you know what? Just just put me in shorts and knee pads. I'll, I'll be fine. And then when he saw it back on TV, he really regretted it. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> it was nice to see him in actual actual ring gear. Speaking of ring gear too, did you notice that there was a little bit of a Hawkeye uh, reference on Christopher Daniels' ring gear? Yeah. Actually, I didn't even pick up on that. Now, actually, I can visualize that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So he, he, he came out with the Hawkeye. It was, it was just a nice little... Yeah. A little cheeky little nice nice little touch yeah so i i just thought that was because hawkeye is obviously the better archer than arrow no offense i mean look i love the arrow verse but hawkeye ooh, ooh, in the ooh. comics no in the comics hawkeye is my dude not in the movie and not that the not that jeremy renner did a bad job but in the comics yeah hawkeye is my dude clint barton the the version that doesn't live on a farm the version that bought an entire apartment building from the mob bosses so that you know his neighbors didn't have to pay exorbitant rent that clint barton <laughs> Oh man, I love Hawkeye. Anyway, <laughs> getting very, very far away from wrestling. That's for a different podcast series. Uh, Tennille Dashwood and Mandy Leone joined the commentary booth for the women's match. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, comes out to Adam Cole's indie music. I know. I was sitting next to an Adam Cole fanboy. Not, not that I'm not a fanboy, but uh, <laughs> his thing was like, what the hell? Why would he vote she use? I'm like, I was, I was like, "That's smart. Very smart of her to do that." He would have. She would have had everyone talking. That was perfect. That yeah, was it. yeah, it was great. And also, just calling her Doctor Baker, Doctor Britt Baker, DMD. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's such a great move. I love. I love everything about it. Uh, Madison Rain comes out, doesn't get the love she deserves. Madison, oh, good old Madison. Uh, she's having a hell of a hell of a year. Oh, isn't she? Oh, she's fantastic. She's gone from she she had uh, her little run in Impact to May Young Classic. She's doing work with Women of Honor and now All In as well. Uh, good for her. She's she's a veteran at this point and she's doing good work. Yeah, I agree on that one. Big time. Chelsea Green comes out and she plays the token crazy chick. Yeah, yeah. She had the half half and. The little handshake thing at the start, I like that. The little, you know, what they are, the crazy side to her. What was her impact character? Is it Laurel Venus? Um, I have to be honest with you, I never saw her in Impact. Oh, okay. So I, I've only gotten back into Impact lately. Okay. So yeah. But then Tessa Blanchett, someone who I do know from Impact. Um, Tessa, arguably the best women's wrestler around today. Arguably. Okay. It's, I mean, there's there's a lot of competition at this point in women's wrestling, but. Tessa's in the conversation for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. That's just fantastic. And she wins the match with the Hammerlock DDT, and this match was really, really good. All four women did a fantastic job, and all four women got super over out of this. I believe. Oh, absolutely. The whole match is just. I don't know. It's just a really good match, and I, I loved it. Just the respect that they got. You know, a lot of people are just like, "Oh, just one women's match on the whole card." Oh. Yeah, with that they only needed one women's match. That was just fantastic. Like, well, that was one you'll remember. That was one of my big things going in. I said it on our preview yeah. cast. I said, you know, there's only one women's match. It feels a little bit WWE. Like, what's going on? But the women actually featured heavily throughout the show. We talked about Jordan Grace already on the pre-show. Uh, she shone like an absolute star. And then we had women on commentary for this women's match, and the women's match was one of the best matches on the show. And then we also had uh, the next match. Let's talk about the next match. So Cody versus Nick Aldis felt a little early to me, but uh, Cody versus Nick Aldis featured very heavily Brandy Rhodes. Yeah. This match was... I have two little gripes. Other than that, just beautiful storytelling. Beautiful storytelling, I think. I wonder if our gripes are the same. First gripe for me... And it's tiny. I mean, it's, not, it's not tiny. It's just irrelevant because, you know, I'm still here sitting here thinking about that match today. So, you know, was the placing on the card. I think that was, I don't know, the NWA title. I know it wasn't an NWA show. Um, and I know they didn't want to, you know, make all in, I don't know, like 
come second place to the NWA title. But yeah, just I think it could have been done a little bit further down the card, but it, it is what it is. And just the only other minor thing for me was the little bit of interference. I was like, it didn't. I don't know if it needed that little bit of interference. The 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 blood part with DDP and all that. That's what it. It was what it was. Um, like it wasn't the greatest looking thing at, at the time, but. You weren't a fan. You weren't a fan of the blood. No, no, I love the blood. It's just the sort of the, the length that I took and uh, the kind of maybe I guess a little obvious bleeding that would have happened. Um, what, it- yeah, see, because they got a close. That was my gripe. They got a close up shot of DDP checking on Cody. Yeah, and he very clearly was not bleeding yet. And then DDP goes in the ring, gets his shit in, and then he's yeah, exactly. bleeding, and it felt very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Like I said, I don't mind the bleeding part. Like, I, like, I think that you know, kind of tells that old eighties dusty story. You know, like. Yeah, I thought that was necessary. I thought that was beautiful too, because you know the like, iconic image of you know a flare pulling away, uh, dusty, and and the blood, the blonde hair, and all of that. You right. know. I thought I thought that was perfect, but it was yeah, just the way the blading job was very obvious. Uh, if if they'd kept his face concealed better, then it probably would have worked better in my mind. And also for me, the other minor gripe wasn't the little DDP Davari spot, but it was that it was DDP and Davari, not DDP and Jeff. Yeah, actually. Like, why wasn't it Jeff Jarrett taking the cutter? Uh, that's actually a very good point. Was that an ego thing? I don't understand. Like, why Davari? Like, where does Davari come into anything? Jeff Jarrett taking the yeah. cutter would have would have made so much more sense. Yeah. And just for anybody that's um that's pl- pl- playing at home, um, because everyone else in the room that I was with, I was watching it, was just like, I don't understand Davari. What what's he got to do with anything? Why is he on Magnus's side? Just a little throwback. He was with Magnus in World Elite on Impact. They were in a stable together, so I'm guessing they kind of grew a close bond from there. Is <laughs> what I'm thinking. Is is right? Was Eric, yeah. Eric, was Eric's young old old stable from TNA. So maybe they just formed a bond there. So just in case everyone's just like, they have, that would have nothing to do with the other. Why would he be with him? I was like, that's the only thing I could think of. I yeah. Like, it was a little, it was a little odd to me, but it, it still didn't take anything away from the match. The match yeah. was fantastic. Uh, I've seen some people complain that it was slow paced. It was, it was old school, man. It was such an old school yeah. match and it hooked me. By the time and and it hooked yeah. everyone in the crowd too. By the time Aldis hit that elbow drop on Brandy, he was the most hated man yeah. in the world. Right there for all the people watching. For yeah. me at home, that was a moment that got me out of my chair. That's moment yeah. number two uh, that got me out of my chair. Was that yeah. elbow drop on Brandy? I was like, "You motherfucker!" Like I was yeah. in. I was all in. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was well, insane. The, the other thing for me that made me pop was I love the entrances. That was a thing of beauty. The that was very WrestleMania one Hulk Hogan and Mr. T entrance when he's coming out. Yeah, yeah. So having having the having your fight having your fight team with you and walking from backstage and that. Yeah, that I just loved that. I just loved like (sighs) I had a nightmare family jacket. I know, I know. The people will be like, yeah, well, you know, WWE just wouldn't let it. I know. I know. I know exactly what WWE's politics are like. I hated not seeing Dustin Rhodes not there with him. I would have loved yeah. to have seen Dustin Rhodes on his side, like in his team there, in his corner. Um, but you know, Dreamer and DDP have had a lot to do with Cody over his life, so a lot to do with Dusty and Cody. So you know, that, that was a nice touch. And then even just the ref, them getting to call El Hebner doing the sort of like kind of felt like it was kind of like a boxing match type thing. Old school NWA match, you know, talking about the uh, talking about the opponents and that. I love that. Just all those little touches that just made it feel like a yeah. classic NWA match, and I was just like, it felt very old school. And you can tell that Cody and the Bucks love wrestling. Oh, absolutely, you know? yeah. You can tell that they love old school wrestling, that they grew up on it, and and that it's it's what got them into it because the the whole thing was a love letter to that. Like I said, every match finished clean. Every match told a story. Uh, some of the matches I've seen a lot of people, not a lot, but the few people that had negative things to say about this show 
complained that some of the matches took too long to get going. Yeah. And I'm like, so you want to watch PWG. You don't want to watch wrestling. Not that PWG isn't wrestling, but, you know, All In was never going to be that. And I knew that coming in. I knew coming in that All In was going to be that because Cody is an old school guy. Yeah. And people don't give the Bucks enough credit for it, but they are as well. No, 100%. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't get the whole, yeah. And I, I think it was just fantastic. And like you said, it was uh, Cody, I was touching on this earlier, Cody with his his booking geniuses need to know, like, yeah, I really hope that Cody starts working with Billy Corgan a bit on the lead up to the 70th anniversary show. I'm so excited yeah, for yeah. that now. I am so excited. Is it going to be a rematch? Is it going to be someone else? Yeah. You would assume it's going to be the rematch, yeah. but I kind of want to see him move straight on to another yeah. challenger. And my other little thing is I would love to see him keep it to at least Wrestle Kingdom. Can you imagine the NWA title once again appearing? It's been many years, many years, but seeing the NWA title go down on a connected to a Rhodes, a Rhodes family member walking down Tokyo Dome. Like, yeah. Well, what about, what about Madison Square? Oh, Garden, yeah. There you go. Keep it going. Oh, the, man. the NWA title being defended at Madison Square Garden in Kenny Omega vs. Cody. Uh, how much, how much do you wish that Ric Flair had a good son? Good wrestling son. <laughs> Oh, come on. Well, hey, we could always just get Cody versus Charlotte, right? Yeah, why not? Why not? Nah. Why not? The, why not? The best, the best we'll ever get there is Charlotte versus Tessa. Blanchard versus Flair. <laughs> but um, moving, yeah. moving on. So this match, so Cody and Aldis, it kind of kicked the show into the next gear. And every match after this was kind of a main event. Hangman Page versus Joey Janela, I said going in, I, I think this is probably going to steal the show for me. And I think it, I think it did. Yeah. I, I mean, Cody and Aldis was next level emotional. Like, I literally cried because it's Father's Day and Cody and the Brandy spot and their relationship and everything. I, I literally cried at the yeah, end of that match. Uh, uh, but but this Hangman Page, Joey Janela match, holy crap. It was it was mm-hmm. amazing. It was... The powerbomb off the ramp through those two tables that Joey didn't quite get to. The... I just everything about it. Yeah, like Joey Janela scares the shit out of me. <laughs> just watching him scares the shit out yeah. of me. Like I feel like I'm gonna watch a wrestler die every time I watch him. Uh, whether it's him. Oh, that closing spot. This is this was part three that got me out of my yeah. chair. It was that closing spot? Yeah. Is oh it's, man, <laughs> he's just he's insane. And like I'll never forget the day that um I heard. I think it was. Back in April, I can't remember it was one in yeah it was the one in April, the weekend leading into um, the Progress Tour and Progress XPWA, and I remember hearing Robbie taking a Robbie Eagles taking a pile driver to a chair at PWG like twenty four hours before he had to get back on a plane to come back to Australia for Travis Banks match. I'm like, like yeah. is this guy serious? Like, is he trying to kill Robbie? Like, was, like. <laughs> oh, I'm, like, I'm just like he's a bad like, boy yeah he's a bad boy and this is another match that heavily heavily featured a, a good strong woman character like Penelope Ford <laughs> just out of nowhere impressing everyone yeah. didn't she what I was with people like I don't really know a lot about Penelope Ford but no. me either to be honest with you yeah, yeah. like people were with, just like oh who's this chick I'm just like oh, I'm just like yes it's just Janelle's you know manager or girlfriend and you know whatever Ballet. ballet or whatever. P- yeah. P.S. P.S. But no, she I was love, incredible. I love this show just because of the, the ballets. Ballets need to come back in wrestling full swing. I know WWE got a little bit of it with um, uh, Selena Vega and stuff like that, but I... No, but the way they were used in this show, yeah. that's the difference, is the way yeah, exactly, they were used. Exactly. Yeah. It felt so fresh, even though it felt old school. I mean, what's old is new again, right? Because it hasn't been done this way. I, I mean, I want to see another All In, and I want to see them get Famous B, right? I want managers in wrestling. I want valets in wrestling. I want tag teams in wrestling. 
<laughs> that's what I want, yeah. man. I'm, I'm looking for, I'm begging for it. And these guys are giving it to me. And I'm like, this feels amazing. Like it feels like watching um, mid South. It feels like watching WCCW, yeah. you know, but obviously in a new long yeah. form uh, pay-per-view content. But anyway, uh, talking about the match again, uh, the, the match ended. Now we, this, this so this is a testament to being the elite, right? These guys got boots over. When the boots came out of that bag, the crowd came unglued. I caught it. I, I how do you get? It. How do you get a pair of boots yeah. over? I caught it the other night when we did the all in all in cast. I caught it. I was like, yeah. Well, the boots had, had to come, to come into play. play. Yeah. I didn't think the phone was going to come to the play, of but course. it did. Um, yeah, and then and then he pulls out the phone, and that got an even bigger <laughs> pop. And they built from the pops to the pop to the pop, like the Cracker Barrel too. That came into it because Cracker Barrel yeah, sponsored the Cracker the Barrel event. Barrel. It's perfect. Right. And so he literally had a Cracker <laughs> yeah, Barrel yeah. barrel, and, and everything that they did, like, and and the, these little callbacks to being the elite, and, and and it just got huge pops. And then the rite of passage off the ladder was insane. They did that bit where they show it in slow mo, so you can see. Look, these guys actually yeah. did it safely. <laughs> um, and, but oh man, it was insane. And then, of course, the shenanigans yeah. after the match were ever. You, you know this. Everything I love about wrestling. Joey Ryan. Oh me, uh, oh my. Druid. He is druid back. Penises. He is res erected. Druid penises. He is the has best thing. He has come <laughs> again. Yes. No, those, uh, did you see, I posted on Facebook, you can actually buy those suits. I know. I'm, I'm, yeah, Halloween this year. I'm walking around. <laughs> Halloween. Let's all go as, as, as yeah. penis druids. For no, let's do it in Melbourne. Let's all go as, uh, uh, did I tell let's you? Let's go to MCG or dresses <laughs> penis druids. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'll let us in. God, no. Did, did, uh, did, did I tell you about my, my, uh, own head cannon for this? Like my little story that I made up no. in my head? No, I haven't heard it. I'm excited about it. No. Okay. So, so I'm. This is this is the story I made up in my head for what's happened here. Is Joey Ryan in his time in Lucha Underground? You know, there's all sorts of supernatural characters in in Lucha yeah. Underground, and and he got in touch with with someone. He's he's been in contact with the spirit realm, where he he spoke to interdimensional penis beings, right? Who taught him the way of the penis? Yeah, and and as a result, he is worshipped by these penis druids who used who used cock magic that they learnt from the interdimensional beings to bring him back to life from the dead. <sighs> I mean, it's the only explanation. Because wrestling. It's the only explanation. The, the penis druids that worship Joey Ryan used cock magic to bring him back from the dead. It makes sense to me. I mean, yeah, I, I'm down with that. But, oh, wow. This... And then, so what happened at the end? Did they, did they sacrifice Adam page i don't because they carried him away yeah and the kind of i I mean yeah they kind of gave it that uh wyatt family slash old school undertaker sacrifice um type carrier but then spoiler alert um you know breaking breaking character um he was out you know a couple of hours later at the end yeah yeah well yeah but that was after the show ended so it doesn't count uh, the props to the Chicago crowd, by the way. Best chant I've ever heard in my life. Rest in penis. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever started that one, give that man a, a, a free car or something, because that's the best chant I've ever I heard. I want to say two life. things to any Australian fans that are listening and who are still thinking about getting tickets for World Series Wrestling. A, there is a chance that we get Hangman Page versus Joey Janelli hardcore match in Sydney or. Adelaide or sorry, ooh, sorry not Adelaide touching, touching jerk. There. Sorry, um, <sighs> maybe a Joe Janellivus. I'm angry at Perth because Perth have not sold enough no. tickets. But Perth, listen to this because you may get Joe Janellivus Hangman Page. Um, oh, is Hangman on this tour? No, Shit, I'm sorry. No, he's not. You a you may get Joe Janella type hardcore match. So as much as I love Hangman Page, Joe Janella could do that against anyone. <laughs> um, B, Joey Ryan will be back. And you got to remember that that guy just walked out to 10,000 people and probably, in my opinion, probably the coolest spot out of anything all night. I, the penis druid thing is just something that will stand out to me yeah. on this wrestling card for the rest of my life. Like, yeah. 
So, mm. like I said, this the ending to this got me out of my yeah. seat as well. Yeah. Uh, then we move on. We have Flip Gordon and Flip Gordon accompanied by Brandy Rhodes. Uh, she had a nice costume change. Uh, she came out dressed as his little, you know, army girl. And uh, taking on Jay Lethal, who came out with Lanny Poffo wearing legitimate Macho Man WCW yeah. gear. Like, fans that... That was gifted to yeah. him. Yeah. Quick little quick little call back to an earlier match. I just want to make a quick me- mention of this, that it has um, has tie-ins to this match as well. Props to Tessa Blanchard coming out with both Tully, uh, you know, meeting Tully down the thing, and with Magnum T, with oh, Magnum TA on, yeah. in the uh, wheelchair. Brilliant. Like, I, I, I hit the feels because... Um, my dad used to be. Uh, I'm not. I don't like my dad. Um, that I have a relationship with anymore. But he used to be obsessed with Magnum TA TA when he was a kid, and he used to show me old NWA tapes. And I do now go back to um, old NWA tapes on the network and stuff to watch um, a lot of his stuff. And it's just like that's other than Dynamite Kid. That's probably one of the most heartbreaking stories in wrestling. Um, you know, he would have been one of the biggest stars in the 90s, 100%, Magnum DA. Um, yeah. So that's just a heartbreaking story. Um, so ha- have him on the card. And then, yeah, with Jay Lethal, bringing Poffo down with him. It's just those little touches. And it's just those are the touches that I'm just like, Dusty was 100% smiling down on this. Like, you know, having guys like um, Magnum, Poffo, you know, Tully, all these sort of legends, like Tommy Dreamers, the DDPs. The Nightmare Family, it's yeah. Just, it was just beautiful touches. No, absolutely. It was, it, it was amazing. They, Like I said, it was an absolute love letter to wrestling. You can tell yeah. these guys love the history and respect yeah. the history. It's not, they're not doing it for cash grabs. Like, none of this was advertised, with the exception of Road Warrior Animal. What a <laughs> rush. Like, none of it was on the nose. And that was on the nose. That was a joke. Yeah. You know? That was, they were making fun of themselves when they did that. You know, it was, yeah, uh, definitely. I, I agree with you. But just complete love for pro wrestling. And as a fan, it it was special. It was, it was special. Like, you don't get that because WWE is such a business. You don't get that from them anymore. You don't, you don't necessarily often feel like these are fans doing things for right. fans. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the match. Jay Lethal versus Flip Gordon. This was probably the only match on the show that I thought was a little eh. Yeah, because I guess... <sighs> I think it just went too long, too long for me. I think it could have been a little uh, shorter. You know, there was a little part of me that I thought, ooh, is maybe Flip going to win the title? I don't know if it's too soon for him to win the title. Yeah, no, if you're watching Ring of Honor, that, no, I, yeah. there was no way Flip but was going thought- over. That's why I yep. felt it went too long. I thought they could have done the spots with the change from Jay Lethal back to Black Machismo and back and that. They could have done that a lot quicker and, and yep. gotten it yep. done, you know? But um, It could have ended with the elbow yeah. drop. But like that side of it um, aside, the the fun side, the fun stuff to it. Oh, and just the, just the simple little things like him noticing uh, Brandy on that side and pulling her over to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was my favorite part of this match was the interactions with Brandy and lifting her yeah. up on the shoulder <laughs> and her getting down and then hitting his arm and turning him back into Jay Lethal and him being like, where am I? Like, that was amazing. And I, I just have to say, Brandy was an absolute star of this yeah. whole show. Brandy is a queen. And I like, I can't express yeah. it enough. Uh, her outfits as well were fantastic. She looked gorgeous. She's an absolute yeah. queen. Everything she did on the show okay. was money. And the way they booked her and her involvement in these matches, her protecting Cody with that from that elbow drop, it was oh, that, it, it that just was, makes you that tumble, was very you know? that moment, um, kind of ties in with this match. So like you know, Jay Lethal's, um, you know, thinking that she's Miss Elizabeth and that her role in Cody's match was very Miss Elizabeth. Yes. It was. That's yeah. what I mean when I say like these are fans that love and respect right. the history because they don't just love it and they don't just throw it out like, "Hey, look, where the we do this and we know this." They they respect it and they pay homage to it without without it feeling tacky. It felt beautiful all yeah. over again. I you know? agree with that. It, 
it's yeah, it's just not enough good things can be said. Like this is like I said, we're talking about this this Jay Lethal and Flip Gordon match, and to me, this was the worst match. And listen to how we're talking about it. You know, it was it was still fantastic, and the WCW gear was nice. The the throwback to Miss Elizabeth was was amazing. It was, Flip kicking out of three elbows though, uh, it it bummed me out at first until I realized what yeah. they were doing. And he did the whole he did the whole yeah, yeah. And, I, know, hits the boot in the leg. I, just, I did like that moment. That was, that was actually an enjoyable moment. I did like that. I was like, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of fun. And I like that. Yeah, and then Lethal wins with a yeah. lethal injection. It was it was good ultimately, but it just wasn't the best. And and of course, we know I hate the bully race story. Anyone who listens to all the rest knows I hate this bully race story that they're doing in Ring of Honor. I think it's gone on too long. I think that. The only people getting over out of it are Colt Cabana and, and Bully Ray, and it's bumming me out. Like, Flip hasn't gotten enough good offense in. And then Bully Ray comes out and starts beating everyone down, and Colt Cabana makes the save yeah. again. And it bums me out. They did, like, the shield powerbomb through the table, and I, I just I could have done without all yeah. of that. No, I agree. I could have done with the match just ending and that being... No, I agree with that part. But that's my only downside to the entire show was, was this. So, moving on, Kenny Omega versus Pentagon a star making performance for pentagon if he wasn't a star before he he is now i saw people on twitter being like isn't this the hardcore guy from tna i need to watch more impact and that made me very happy i think that's the big thing of this show is uh everyone's price just went up everyone who was involved in this their price just went up and there are more eyes on them and it's good for the like you go type in pentagon um to google or um cagematch.net shout out to cagematch.net one of my favorite websites on out there um apart from the bplus.com of course um <laughs> if you go type in pentagon's name in any wrestling database you're going to come out with impact and come out with cmlll you're even going to come out with triple a you're going to come out with lucha underground major league wrestling like all these promotions just got potentially ten thousand eyes on them um yeah it's got a bit well, yeah. more than that like look at the, the i think the people oh, sorry, in the audience yeah, sorry. already knew yeah I think, there are people who are yeah. watching from home potentially like people who are watching from home that tuned in because they watch new japan but they don't necessarily watch any american right. indies and then they're like oh this mjf guy's pretty good this yeah tessa blanchard girl's pretty good where yeah. can i watch them you know it's it's a big big win right. for the industry like even even for bookers i mean look at gato like you know gato could be looking at this guy oh hello Here's a couple of new gaijins that we could keep an eye out on just in case we do lose the big stars. Like, is MJF a potential idea or something yeah. like that? And it's just it's fantastic. Yeah, like... But this, this match, Kenny yeah. Omega versus Pentagon, that, I, I actually legitimately thought that Kenny Omega's yeah. neck was broken when they did the package, the Fear Factor package pile driver on the apron. They even showed it in slow motion and his head hit that apron. Like, it was... That shoot, man. His head hit that apron. It sounded disgusting. <laughs> it terrified me. I'm like, oh my God, he's dead. And I was out of my chair once again. Yeah. And they did their job once again. Uh, it's just, Ken, everyone knows what Kenny is. He's the best bout machine. He's, you know, he, he can create some, He can create something from nothing in a blink of an eye. But yeah, I mean, I know, I love Pentagon from, all these different work, whether it's Major League or AAA or whatever, but actually not, not AAA, from CMLL. Um, but yeah, he's become a, he's become a superstar. I, he's the hottest guy not named Kenny Omega in pro wrestling right now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If I was WWE, I'd probably be chasing him. I'd be chasing him and Phoenix before... Well, they are, yeah, they apparently. Are. But I chase him more than someone like Kenny. Now, which obviously, Kenny's going to make him lots and lots of money. Um, but, yeah. Oh, but they have a big untapped Spanish market yeah. that they want to get is a perfect so. person. Like, he's a perfect guy. They're- yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be really good. I think I actually am happy for him to go to WWE. Jay's going to – regular Jay's going to hate me saying this, but I'm happy for him to go to WWE because he breaks the mold of what people expect when they see a yeah. guy in a mask. He's not Rey Mysterio, yeah. you know? He's not even even Phoenix. Phoenix is more of that classic, you know, WWE luchador, WCW luchador that they've yeah. brought in. You know, your Ultimo Guerrero, your 
your uh, your Rey Mysterio, your Juventud Guerrera, those types of guys. Pentagon is not. Pentagon no, exactly. is very different, and he's a z- zombie ninja. He's. <laughs> I mean, he, how can you not love Pentagon? Yeah. So I'm. I'm actually happy to see it. I hope it doesn't get messed up though. Which, let's be honest, mm. probably oh. will. One thing I thought about this match: Why did Kenny not have his belt, and why was he called the Cleaner? I thought he left that behind, the Cleaner, Monica. But where was the belt? Yeah, there was no belts. There was no belts on anyone. And I was like, that's one thing that I was kind of disappointed about. There was no belts on anybody. Like, like I was like, it sort of, it sort of started with the women's match. I was like, I'm like, oh, why didn't Tessa bring a new knockout title? Oh, I was like, and I was like, there's someone else. Yeah, I think it might have been the Kenny match or. Yeah, I was like, yeah, with Kenny, I was like, why didn't you bring the title out, or why didn't the Bucks or Marty bring out any of their titles? I was like, oh. but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I would love to see. Yeah, it was just a, it was yeah. just a little thing that was just it just felt a little odd. I thought the Bucks did have their titles when they came out. God, I'm having a blank now. Potentially, <laughs> God. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was all of them. Maybe this was just the one I noticed because it's so prominent. It's the IWGP. World Heavyweight Championship, and you expected to see it when you see yeah. Kenny Omega. It's I don't know. It was just weird to me because he looks weird without it now. Yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was. I was like, it. He looked smaller too. I don't know if that's just like. I don't know if he's just sort of you know cutting weight after the G one or I don't know what. But he looks smaller. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird, but it was a really good match. And then after the match, of course, the big story. The lights go out, and they played it brilliantly. The commentary were like, look, this is a first time putting on a big show. Sometimes these things happen. We're going to try to get this back as soon as possible. And then, when, and then when the lights came back on, Kenny looked confused and relieved, like, oh, they fixed the problem. You know, the way they sold it was yeah. perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. I'm just... And then, and then Pentagon attacks, and it was very clear Pentagon has both arms tattooed. Yeah. And... Now he doesn't. So this is not Pentagon. I actually immediately went to Sammy Callahan oh, in yeah. my head. Because Sammy Callahan is doing some stuff with Pentagon. And I'm like, how cool would it be if he attacked Kenny Omega right now? Like, okay, Sammy Callahan. Because I knew it wasn't Neville. I knew it wasn't Kevin yeah. Owens. And I knew it wasn't Jericho. Because Jericho has a Fuzzy show on the other side of the country tonight. We know he can't be at all in. He's going to be at all in too. Holy shit, it's yeah. Jericho. It's a code breaker. I'm like, no way. How is he here? Did did he cancel the Fuzzy show? What is going on? And I'm out of my chair again because they sucked me in. They insane. He attacks. He says, "See you on the cruise," and then he leaves through the crowd. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, amazing. What else can you say? I mean, it's just, I don't know. It was a, yeah. such a surprise. It was such a surprise. And uh, you follow the story on Instagram too. Uh, what happened was he he told the Jericho told the story on Instagram. He he rocked up earlier in the day in the Pentagon getup. So when he got to the arena, he was in the Pentagon getup. No one knew he was there. He walked around backstage straight to the Young Bucks office, and people thought he was just Pentagon walking around. I guess no one said anything. He goes straight to the Young Bucks office. He stays there until it's time for him to go out. The lights go out. He goes out. He does the attack. He unmasks. He leaves through the crowd. He goes straight onto a private plane to go back to the Fozzie show where he played the Fozzie show still in the Pentagon makeup because he didn't have time to take it off. Like, like what a workhorse this dude is. you got to think about this. So, like, obviously, it wasn't a match. But you just you got to think about this. That was the first time that Jericho stepped inside a ring in America, that's not called WWE since 1999, or whatever it is. Like, he has not stepped foot in an, in another American promotion of any kind since, since the late since 90s. The 90s. And, like, his loyalty to Vince, you know, he's obviously stuck through that for a long time. You gotta assume, you gotta assume that Vince, you gotta assume that Vince gave his. Oh, of course. You got to. Because he says he's still yeah. loyal to WWE. If, that says to me that, that, that WWE are Yeah, okay and from what I've it. heard, I mean, I, I got to know that it's true or not. Uh, I can't remember if it was you who told me or someone else who told me about the fact that, like, oh, God, like, why didn't they tell me that they were doing September 1st? I would have told them it was a bad idea to book it in September. 
Yeah. Vince McMahon would have been given his blessing on this show. Like, yeah, obviously, he'd be. To be fair, it's actually probably good for Vince because he's probably sitting there going, oh, I'm going to hack him. I'm going to have him. I'm going to have him. And. I don't think Vince would have watched it. I mean, he'd have his eyes on it and people would be telling him what was yeah. good and what have you. Probably Most people are probably burying it to him, telling him it's I mean, not that good yeah. <laughs> because they want but, they want him to feel good about him, his stuff. But no, I, I think it, Vince knows when something yeah, is good absolutely. for business. Of course he does. He's, he's been around for a long time and he knows he's a smart man. Uh, people don't give him credit. But let's move on uh, to someone else that people don't give credit to. Marty Skrull, uh, people talking like he's not a heavyweight. I don't know what they're talking about. He proved at this show that in his heart, he's oh, a yeah. heavyweight. Sure, bloody is. He is. That, oh, what a match. Um, I know this match got a little bit longer than I think it was originally meant to be booked. Oh, yeah, I rewatched it today. So apparently, according to the sheets, it went 12 minutes over. I rewatched it. They actually sent a second referee out. I didn't know. Really? And it, 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 yeah, I didn't notice it when I was watching it live. But when I rewatched it today, they sent a second referee out and he's literally slapping the canvas on the at ringside being like, Marty, now it's time to go home. Wow. <laughs> just full, just straight up yelling at Marty like it's time to end this. Wow. I did yeah. not know there was that. <laughs> wow. Okay. I did not. No, neither did I. That's that's how good the match was that I didn't notice it. I was just so focused on what they were doing. And it was such a great match, though. The 205 into the the finger snap. <laughs> and then I thought Marty had it. I thought Marty had it won when he stopped the rain with the umbrella and then hit the rainmaker of his own. A beautiful rainmaker, yeah. by the way. I thought he was going to win. Yeah. I, I literally it was like... Uh, for a moment there, I was just like, oh, my God, like, this is actually going to happen, and good on him. Like, I was like, this is cool. Like, I wasn't expecting it, and um, I in a million years believed that he was going to, but I was like, wow, like, this is going to happen. Like, this this is actually happening. But, you know, obviously, he did it, but I was just like, yeah. Ah. But, but again, you talk about star-making performances. For Marty Skull, yeah. this was a huge match. And and he he delivered in a big yeah. way. The the elite or BC elite or um, whatever they want to call themselves now, they need to get someone in the junior division because Marty needs to come up now. And they're gonna. I want to talk about Marty in a minute. We'll talk about it when we get yeah. to the post show, but because he seems like he's kind of on the outside mm. a little. Yeah, but. Uh, let's let's talk about main event. So we've got Rey Mysterio, Phoenix, Bandito versus the Golden Elite, Kota Ibushi and the Young Bucks. Yep. This match was short. It only had 12 minutes. It ended with three seconds to spare. <laughs> and that was after Nick got on the phone and negotiated an extra minute with the pay-per-view provider. And then they, they managed to uh, to end it with, with three seconds yep. to spare. It felt very rushed. From about five minutes in, you could hear the refs telling them yeah. to go home. Seriously, we don't have time. Go home, go home. you got to remember, there are three different language speakers in this yeah. match. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, so they're, they're going across language barriers, right? Like, and, and putting together this match and running from spot to spot and having to call it pretty much on the fly, like, figure out how to get the big spots they wanted because they have less than half the time they'd originally had, right? So you had to have, there was a, so much running around. You had to have, you know, one of the Bucks communicate to Ray, okay, let's go to this spot now. And then Ray would have to communicate that to Bendito. You know what I mean? It was, it's just crazy to think that they actually pulled it off and it was entertaining. It was a spot fest. It was. And you know what? That match is the perfect match to have in that spot, in my opinion. So any other any other match if it was rushed I would have gone are you serious like that's ridiculous but because it yeah so I I saw people complaining that Cody didn't headline and I'm like think about it if Cody headlined and all the other matches went long then Cody would have had yeah. to rush that story yeah. into 12 and, minutes and I don't mm -hmm. and no, I, don't need, I, I don't need 15 minutes of high flying like 
Sometimes, like, I, I love Bucks and I love, you know, I love I loved all six guys in the ring, even Bandito. Ben- Bandito impressed yeah. in a big way, um, yeah. But, and Phoenix with his spot where he oh, ran across the oh, road. Just outstanding. But I wouldn't need 15 minutes of that. Like, they, all six of them, well, you know, especially five of them are all, you know, very young and very athletic and that. Uh, and you still got the, you know, Ray Mysterio is still, still golden. You know what, this Rey Mysterio, this Rey Mysterio was the best Rey Mysterio I've seen in his little yeah. indie stint. You, you know, he, he didn't bust out anything near this good in his New Japan matches. Like, this was, this was Rey. This was, he was real good. And and I, I loved the Wolverine costume too. And my daughter, my daughter was very excited that Wolverine was wrestling. I couldn't, I couldn't explain to her that it was actually Rey Mysterio dressed as Wolverine. She just didn't, um, she was like, it's Wolverine, Dad. Wolverine's <laughs> wrestling. I want Wolverine to win. I want Wolverine to win this match, Daddy. Why didn't Wolverine win this match? Yeah, it was it was Wolverine, and I loved it. I loved every yeah. part of it. Oh, that's fantastic. But I, I just yeah, I love the fast paceness on the match, and it was fine. Like because because of who they are, I was okay with it. Kind of finishing quite quick. I'm like, oh, that's fine. Look, kind yeah, of a, you know, it was, it was a Lucha Libre match essentially, um, and I loved it. I was I was like, oh, it's yeah. great. Like. And that's where I say this match, this whole show was booked perfectly because they gave themselves that buffer at the beginning and they put the main event as the match that could be cut short if it needed to be yeah. and would still work. They they thought about everything as uh, as pro wrestling fans who want to watch a pro wrestling show. They thought about yeah. everything and they had everything. The only thing that I thought was strange was having the little indie style metal barricades in this giant arena. <laughs> it looked odd when they did the wide angle shots. Yeah. That was my only thing yeah. that I thought was was weird. You're talking about kind of Marty being on the outer. Yeah. Do you reckon he got like I know he's obviously still best mates with them and stuff and you know he's not going anywhere. But do you reckon there's a little bit of heat that he went too long? Because he was not out there with them at the end. No, he wasn't, and he's also. But even before the show, when when they talked about when Cody talked about whatever the next step is, we all take it together. The names he mentioned were himself, the Bucks, Kenny, yeah. and Paige. He never yeah. mentioned Marty in that. So I think Marty is a bit of an outsider in this group. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to speculate. I mean, he he must be friends with them. Like they're all, uh, they they do so much yeah. business together. It, but yeah, it just seems like maybe he's he's yeah. a little bit of an outsider. Yeah. I have no idea. I, it's pure speculation, but yeah. it just seems like it because yeah, Cody didn't mention him, and then he didn't come out at the end yeah. when everyone else did. Well, yeah, maybe Marty's just a little bit different, you know. Like I don't know we may be reading we may be maybe reading way too much into it. I don't think he would have got heat. I think that at the end of the day, I think everyone on the show was told go out there yeah. and do what you do, right? And and I think that the Bucks put themselves in that position so that they could, you know, they they didn't need to be featured. This was their show. They were going to get all the accolade anyway. They didn't need to go over, or they went over, but they didn't need to be featured, you know, the way some of the other guys did. You know, this was a star-making performance for Marty. This was a star-making performance for Paige. If you cut time from them to give the Bucks some extra time, that'd feel weird. I, I don't think that there's going to be any heat. Yeah. I mean, I might be wrong. I'll be interested to read about yeah. it, but you know, uh, I can't imagine there being heat. I'm pretty sure they'd just be like, you yeah. know, it happens. <laughs> but it, it does seem strange that they went 12 minutes over time. I think I, I I assume that would come down to a Carter more than yeah. It's more than it just Marty. it killed me yeah. does to see um Paige not being out there like at the end, like unless there's some sort of injury thing at the end, but surely like. The entire being be the elite crew minus um, like Joey and Flip um, were all out there, but I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was odd. It was definitely odd. But they came out and they basically they they joked about how they only had they ended the show with three seconds yeah. to spare, and uh, and they they thanked everyone and you know they teased that you know this is probably going to happen again. So, yeah, where do we think where do we think they go from here? Well, first stop is that seventieth anniversary. 
Yeah. Well, that's for Cody. I don't think but, I don't know if any of the others. But you got you got to think. Okay, like yeah, I I, I definitely think there's an all in two. I just, uh, I I think last night if there was some idea that they were going to that they were going to sign, I think. In my opinion, last night would have been like, oh no, let's not do that. I I, I think yeah, if anything was like, oh, I don't know, it sounds silly, but if anything was to save, you know, the indie fans from losing, uh, the Bucks or Cody or Kenny, last night was the night to do it. Not the Wrestle Kingdoms, not the Supercard of Honor, because, you know. Kenny can go to WWE, come back in three years and go back to Wrestle Kingdom and be the same thing. Uh, as much as I love Wrestle Kingdoms. You no, know, Ring of Honor is going to be the same regardless of who's there. Ring of Honor will find a way to bring up new stars again. They've done it before. They're all fine. But these super shows, it, like different things, like where, whether it's all in, then yes, you've got the 70th anniversary NWA show. Then you're going to have the cruise. Then, you know, like all these little things that they're not just little things, but big things that are popping up to tie in the wrestling industry is just, it's just super cool. What if, what if, like I said to you, so, I mean, WWE are going to yeah. want these guys, right? And I'm sure that the Bucks specifically would want their WrestleMania moment. I don't think Cody has any no. desire to go back. Other than maybe he might have that little, I want to go back and be a star because I've shown yeah. that I can be. But I don't, I don't know if Vince would even look at it and go, "Yeah, you've shown." It. Like I think Vince would still look at it and be like, "Yeah, but this is WWE and it's different, and you're still not yeah. the guy." You know, I don't think he'll no. ever be looked at like the no. guy in WWE. And Cody's so, most, and Cody's most think- depressing time of his career was that last couple of months as as Stardust. He was depressed as shit. And he still made it work. Uh, he's, and he's yeah. depressed. So yeah. yeah, I don't think he goes back. No, I don't. I don't think he has any desire to go back. I th- I could see the young bucks wanting that WrestleMania moment just because they're kids who grew yeah. up watching it, you know. And and I can completely respect that and understand that. Uh, I don't think Kenny has any desire to go back because he was in the development and he no. didn't like it and he left. And he's he loves Japan. I don't think he no. has any desire to go back. Uh. But I speculated about this on the preview show, and I'm going to double down on it now, having seen the show. What if Vince just says, you know what? I mean, Vince works with Progress and, you know, uh, a couple of other companies like Evolve and what have you. What if Vince said, look, come on, have your WrestleMania moment. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll put you on TV on USA once every three months for one of these big shows that you like to do with all your friends and, and I'll pay for it. And you guys get to just do what you want, still take all your bookings and, you know, you get your WrestleMania moment as well. Given the power position that the Bucks and Omega and all of them are in, don't you think that's a possibility or, or do you no, think I'm completely crazy? No, that's actually, something like that? No, that's actually a really good idea. Actually. It would break the wrestling internet. Oh, absolutely. And I, I've told you my prediction that um, Supercard of Honor, um, they end the show with the uh, curtain call and curtain call. Yeah. and pop up on either WrestleMania or Monday Night Raw. But, yeah. But you think there's an all-in two between now and then? I think they have to. I think, I, and literally, like, they've got the perfect name for it, all-in double or nothing. Like, <laughs> it just sells itself straight away. Double or nothing. Yeah. But maybe, maybe, maybe in January. Yeah, or something like it, like opposite row. Uh, I guess, but then I guess they're gonna have, you know, M- MCG to think about. Uh, MCG, uh, Madison Square Garden to think about. So, you know, maybe, maybe but that's in March though, or April. Yeah, but then you got Wrestle Kingdom in between that. Or Wrestle Kingdom is probably gonna how the hell they do outdo each other again this year. Um, but yeah, I, I think all in two has to happen. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a very interesting time to be a fan. We've been saying it a lot, the, but 
But uh, that all-in day, September 1st, is one for history. Absolutely. It's done a lot for the business. The only- I think that a lot of guys a lot of guys are going to make a lot of money. Yeah. The only other thing, if there's not all-in two, my other dream, Cody needs to co-own or be the head booker with with NWA. Cody's yeah. name needs to be on NWA. If, if they're serious about building NWA up again, they haven't got, you know, huge NWA affiliate uh, cards. Like, there's Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and a couple of other ones that do decent stuff. Um, but if they're going to start bringing the NWA title around to major promotions, be it, you know, House of Hardcore, you know, hell, like, the title that Cody just won, Robbie had a shot at, you know, eight weeks ago. <laughs> and he might again in November. Exactly. Um, you know, whether it's, yeah, whether it's the NWA title appearing at Tokyo Dome or at Madison Square Garden or at Major League Wrestling or at an Impact Zone or in Mexico with, C- you know, CML LL's 85th anniversary is on in a couple of weeks and they're an old school NWA affiliate, you know, show up with that title there. or I don't know. You know, if they want to build NWA back up, Cody is the right man to not only hold the strap, but the book. Possibly. I, I could definitely see him working more with them. Yeah. Definitely. I'm looking forward to this week's being the elite. I'm looking forward to this week's 10 pounds of gold. It's going to be some situations to keep our eyes on. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 think, I think if being the elite, if they make some jokes about Marty going long, I think then we know that every, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm very excited. Uh, Mar- uh, Mikey, before we go, where can people find you? At Big Boy on Twitter and at Big Boy with an extra Y on Facebook. Awesome. And I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are known as the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. That includes Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram. We're taking over the globe. Please like, share, subscribe if you like what we do. Feel free to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. It really helps our visibility. And as always, thank you very much for listening. Hold one. I'm Greg. You're not doing this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. So, no speak English. Dummy. The worst town I've ever been in. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> Coming out. Hold three. The moss covered. Three handles.